Hello everyone, welcome to my brand new Let's Play series of Sunless Skies. I'm Colonel RPG, and I'm very happy to have you here with me as I do a blind playthrough of this game. It's the newest game by Fail Better Games, I believe this name of the studio, and these are the ones responsible, or the studio responsible for Sunless Seas, and also Fall in London, I want to say. And I'm pretty sure they ha their games are available on multiple platforms, and if you haven't heard of them, well... You're in for a little bit of a ride, aren't you? Well, quite literally. I'm, I'm not completely familiar about the setting, uh, about the world. I do know how the gameplay goes, and it is very text-heavy. This is basically a, a mixture of dungeon crawl, or rather, a roguelike game, a roguelite game. It's not quite dungeon crawling. Let's start a new game and you'll see. Uh, and, but it does. There, there is a little bit of that uh, replayability aspect to it. I am gonna be doing a single campaign in this let's play. It, we can do the legacy campaign, which means you can see over there. So basically, as soon as you die, you get uh, somebody else that will uh, get the bonus from your uh, captain. Uh, I, cap captain? Yes, indeed, captain. So I'm gonna do a merciful campaign because uh, I, the, the, I'm not very good at this, and also I have not played more than a couple of hours of uh, Sunless Seas. I, although I did watch uh, quite a few let's plays, but um, well, two let's plays, so that's quite a few. Let's go. So aiming assistance. Oh yeah, I've played a little bit of this game and I know how it works. Uh, it's quite fun. It's quite fun, the aiming. Um, I think it is the same as uh, in Sunless Seas. Let's see what the options here are. Only a few player weapons arc towards the target. Okay. Many player weapons arc toward, uh, gently towards the target, making it e aiming easier. I think this is probably how we should play if you're new to the game. Um, I kind of want to play that way, but th it's fun doing it th this way. Uh, and I don't think there's ammo. Uh, or maybe there is, so I'm not really sure. Let's... let's Let's suffer the pain of, of misses. Oh, let's see, just moderate. Yeah, okay, that's gentle and moderate. Uh, enemy projectile speed, enemy... Oh, yeah, standard. St measured. Enemy projectiles are somewhat slower, making it easier to avoid them. Stately are significantly slower. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, that's interesting. Uh, and then supply consumption, fuel, and supplies are two uh, are the two resources that we have. We have standard. Thrifty... Last longer, okay. And Provident, last much longer. So standard is the hardest. I'm sure this is the correct way to play, but then again, I'm not playing on legacy mode, so uh, let's go. I'm getting achievements already. It's good stuff. When you are overheated, firing your weapons will damage your engine. I didn't try that. You'll see that. You'll see that. Uh, I didn't try f that firing them when I was overheated. I figured it was bad, because it sounds very bad. You'll see. Log of Her Majesty's Locomotive, the Orphean, March 14th, 1905. Our expedition to the domains of the dead has been eventful. The Orphean is damaged and in grievous need of repairs and supplies. We're returning in haste to the reach where I hope to make port at New Winchester. May God be with us for a thousand deaths await in the sky. Final entry of Captain Amelia Charity with Whitlock, DCM, written shortly before her death. DCM... I don't know what DCM is. Well, here we are. End the game. The game got updated because... Uh, well, actually, no. I just misjudged my... Uh, the soundtrack is amazing. Oh, no. Did you see what happened? That's what happened. Okay, so the game did get updated. Uh, but um, but it just did a weird thing. So, I didn't go back there. The Blue Kingdom Transit Relay. Can I go back? I'm going to reverse a little bit. We can dock. Let's see what happens. That's our little locomotive. This is a transit relay to and from the Blue Kingdom, a distant region of heaven still ruled by a sun. Few travel there, it is unwelcoming and uncanny. Thanks to the lack of traffic, many London officials consider this a, a cushy post. Those stationed here are in good favor with the department, so we can recall your recent arrival through the railway and the frantic flight that preceded it. Oh, okay, that's kind of cool. Uh, or remain in the reach, you turn your engine around and have you have business here. Let's go with this one first. 
I don't know if, what the other one is going to be. A narrow escape. The Orphean recently arrived through the relay in a state of distress, having had to flee the Blue Kingdom. Whatever it was the captain did there, it incensed the local authorities. They pursued you to the relay and tried to close it while you were mid-passage. You barely made it out. What's more, the attempt to close the relay has damaged it. No travel will be possible in either direction until it is repaired. This is a transit relay. Oh, it goes back to that... Gotcha, okay. So maybe that's one, oh, that's our main mission or something, I don't know. Uh, let's turn the engine around. The engine here not being the actual engine of our locomotive, but rather our, our locomotive, uh, locomotive, I assume. You put the edifice behind you and head back towards the knotted, overgrown tangles of the reach. Occasionally, stars peek through gaps in the celestial undergrowth. That's right, we're in the, um, we're in the sky. Or something, I'm not, I, I, I don't know many things, but we're floating. You have returned to the reach, an untamed, sunless span of the heavens. London's new frontier, a celestial garden run wild. And then, do oh, I didn't... Ooh, nice, that's pretty cool. Your journey back from the Blue Kingdom was tumultuous. Your locomotive is crippled and Captain Whitlock badly wounded. Actually, we're gonna eventually be able to click on here. I haven't tried these, we got hold. Did something happen? No, no, we just used up our supplies. That's fine. Uh, let's see. Advice for captains. Your profile. This record. This records all aspects of your captain's abilities, accomplishments, and reputations. Okay, thank you. Uh, and this is basically stats, I would assume, and events over here. Dominant in the Reach. Who rules this verdant domain? Huh. Okay. Then we have the journal. Keeps track of your progress and any opportunities you're pursuing. Thank you. And there's just the Orphean. Your engine was damaged in its escape from the Blue Kingdom. The captain was injured. Can we see her back to New Winchester? I know where to go, so, uh, well, this is random map, so maybe I don't know where to go at all. Your officers. We got plenty of officers over here. Use this tab while in port to appoint them or at any time to talk to or otherwise interact with them. This is probably going to be very important eventually. And then we have a chart, which is the, just the map. Uh, maybe this first bit is the same, and then we have the options. Okay, let's keep going. At first... Sorry. As first officer, the crew look to you. The nearest station is New Winchester. Can you get the Orphean there safely? Well, I'm gonna try to. Controls are pretty straightforward. WASD, and then the Q and E for dodging, and we can scavenge these things over here. Much to the relief of your stokers, you find a barrel of fuel among the detritus. Mm-hmm. Would it be floatsome, or would it be jetsome? How would you how, how would you say it in the in the uh, in the sky? A wreck drifts here, less fortunate even than you. We should scavenge her for repairs. A crewman suggests. The Ozymandias. The wreck hangs in the sky, pocked with the recent gunfire. You and the boarding party don your sky suits, garments of waxed canvas lined with felt to protect against the cold of the sky. Two of the crew are whispering as they dress. What business did Captain Whitlock have in the Blue Kingdom anyway? But why, why the devil did we trespass on the districts of the dead? You silence him. Now's not the time. Wait a minute. The districts of the dead is the Blue Kingdom? Okay, uh, let's slip across to the wreck. The gap between the two engines isn't wide, but the endless fathoms of heaven gape beneath it. You jump. Your stomach lurches with vertigo as the stars blaze above you and below. The air of the heavens is thin and torn by, by unpredictable winds when your boots hit the running board of the Ozymandias and your leather-gloved hands fumble for a hold. One of your companions throws you a line, and you lash the two engines together. Only then do the rest of the boarding party follow you. One of them forces, an, uh, forces open an exterior hatch, and you clamber inside. Her interior is cold, unlit, and whistles with wind. Your party's lamps spread butter, buttery... Sorry, buttery... But, buttery... It's... The, 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 with the texture of butter. A buttery... Buttery? I... That's... It doesn't fit well in my mouth Some for some reason. A uh, light over the narrow paneled passages. You make your way towards the hold, stepping over bodies crumpled in the corridor. Unfortunately, your way is blocked. A bulkhead has been mangled inward by a well-aimed barrage. Uh, let's see. Lead your party on a more precarious path. We can see things over here. 75% chance of success. Why does it show me a number three? How do I... What, what is that? Is that a, a, a D6? And you... Th that would make... 66% chance to... No, that'll be 
if it were if you needed to roll a three or lower. I don't know how it works. Let's see. This will test your iron skill. Uh, iron is skill of uh, confronting and overcoming, and then uh, veils is the skill of deceiving and evading. Let's see. Let's make it. A yeah. Go back uh, out onto the Ozymandias' hull. Climb past the blockade and enter through a window on the far side. And do so carefully. Let's go with that. And we succeeded, which is fantastic. The rest of the boarding party follow you without enthusiasm. You recall the first time you climbed outside an engine, helping the captain fix a leak in an exterior pipe. The wind had shrieked buffeting at you. You asked the captain what would happen if you slipped. You fall, she answered tersely. But where to, you asked. She looked down, then up, then back. The sky's depths spiraled all about you. Away, she said, and you heard her fear. Back in the present, you tumble back into the Ozymandias through a shattered window. Your party spill in after you, glad to be back inside. You have reached the Ozymandias' hull, or hold, sorry, a ruin of smashed cargo and spilled supplies, hopefully somewhere amidst the traders you can find parts to repair the Orphean and restock your stores. So the health you can see down here, it is crew health, I'm not really sure if it's uh, crew health or if it's just the amount of people we have. Uh, but this is the health. Not so much this. I'm not really sure what what it means. No, no, no. Wait a minute. That's that's space. This is health. Hmm. I think you lose hold when you get hit. We'll see how that goes. Uh, let's see. Conduct a, a thorough search. You find enough food and gear to restock your supplies and enough spare parts to make necess the necessary repairs to the Orpheon. The food will need to be thoroughly thawed, of course, but you've eaten worse in the skies. Oh, cries one of your party, prying the lead off a long crate. It holds a cannon still nestled in straw. Another crewman pulls a battered birdcage from a, a pile of ruined cargo. Within the cage, something winged and flurred, sorry, and furred, opens a sullen eye. You examine your finds, and we got four supplies, 15 hull, so the, the hull... Oh, right, not hull, that's hold over here. And yeah, we, we repaired all the things, new total of 30. No, 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 we gained 15, and to a 30, we were halfway through. Okay, gotcha. The Ozymandias emits a long, juddering creak. Oh, that's... That's the, the is that the ship or or is that the the thing in that we found in the cage? Your boarding party exchanged nervous glances. From the chaos of its hold, you have retrieved repairs and supplies and discovered some useful equipment, a gun that could be mounted on your locomotive and an educated bat. An educated bat. We can mount the Jerusalem cannon on the Orpheon and we can liberate a diffident bat and employ it as a scout. Well, that wouldn't be liberating it, would it? Um uh, Let's see. Let's first go with a. Hmm. I think this is like the bat that you get in the in, in Sunless Seas. Uh, let's see. The heavens are wide, so locomotives can use scouts like bats to locate things of interest. Hiccups, sorry. Ports, resources, wrecks like this one to scavenge. Let's go with that. And there's no chance, so yeah. The bat treats its rescue as an inconvenience and immediately begins haggling over pay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Does it talk? You offer to put it back in the damn cage and leave it. Uh, on the Ozymandias, at which point it becomes more polite. You doubt it will last. I think it might talk. The Ozymandias... Okay, that's another one. So we could leave. Even though it doesn't look like we can. Later on, we'll be able to. Let's mount Jer the cannon. Jerusal Jer Jerusalem. The Cotterell and Hather Sage Jerusalem fires single shells to a good range more or less accurately. You order two of your party to get it back to your vessel and fit it immediately. The Ozymandias groans again and its structure shudders spasmodically. Okay, I think we're getting out of here. Uh, that's more of the cracks. I can press on to the engine room or I can fall back. Uh, why? Right. Right, right, right. Let's push, push on. You might find some more fuel there. Uh, it better hurry. Yeah, just one more. Just one more. Ooh, it's getting it's getting worse. Oh, it, okay. So the the color is what matters, not the number. Gotcha. The wreck of the Ozymandias screeches as its metal buckles and tears. You press on through the shuddering corridor, searching frantically for the engine room. Okay, I can send a smaller party ahead to retrieve the fuel, or I can go myself and conduct a hasty search. That's 49, so the chances are the same. Or I can fall back. Uh, I'm going to go forward because I'm pretty sure I don't exist yet, so I can't die. Uh, we are going to create our um, captain in a little bit. Okay. 
Well, we failed. The engine room is gray with spilled ash and littered with corpses. Leader has little has survived the Ozymandias' ruin. You search fruitlessly for coal but linger too long. As the wreck is racked with final violent tremors, you race back to the Orphean. With a dying groan, the Ozymandias splits in two, sending shards of splintered plating spinning into the sky. Several of them bite into the Orphean, mauling its hull, which is perfectly acceptable, not a problem at all. Uh, stoking your engines, you steam away from the collapsing wreck. You are restocked, at least, and rearmed. <clears throat> Onwards, indeed. A wrecked... A wrecked... A wrecked? A wreck drifts here, less fortunate even than you. We read that before. We're good. So you can press C to just go on full speed. And press F to send a scout. Cost supplies. Oh! Okay, I don't need... I don't need that. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Actually, we might be able to look at our supplies. I didn't click on that, did I? Your hold! This shows your current cargo and any prospects you've uh, accepted. You can also change your locomotive's equipment here while in port and jettison your unwanted cargo while on port or other in port or otherwise. That's very cool. I got a diffident bat. It uh, weighs 10. So it weighs? How much do other things weigh? Supplies only weighs 5. How big is that bat? That's not a bat. That's a freaking plane. And I got possessions over here. Minimum safe manning number of six. Anything that doesn't take up space in your hold, generally because it's small or entirely metaphysical, which is lovely, appears here. Uh, and yeah, I wonder if, like, quest items more than anything. And we got the, the cannon. So we're good. Yeah. Let's keep going. Okay, we're gonna need to open this barricade. Now, I don't... Oh. Okay, I was gonna say, I don't know if we have... Um, if we have uh, bullets. I'm pretty sure we don't, but I'm gonna try and figure it out. The walls of the captain's cabins are lined with a hodgepodge of curious from across the sky. Captain Whitlock lies in bed. Black marks cover her skin like a, a monstrous brand. When she coughs, coils of acrid smoke pour from her lungs. And I can inquire after the captain's injuries or approach the bedside. Wait a minute, I'm not the captain? Oh, Captain Whitlock, okay. Right, okay, makes sense. Makes makes total sense. Um, let's approach the bedside and see what happens. The captain opens her eyes as you draw near. She attempts to smile. Her mouth is blistered from the blue fires that dance on her tongue. Her hand grips your arm. Her skin is hot as a kettle. Made arrangements. <clears throat> the orphan, orphan will be yours. Her voice is just a rasp of burned meat breath. But promise. She breaks off to scream a word in a language that was not made for human mouths. When she resumes speaking English, she's weaker, her request little more than a gasp. Promise me one last service. Promise. Uh, I uh, demand to know why she took the Orphean to the Blue Kingdom. Let's do that. She laughs, a second, uh, a sound like wood snapping on the fire. Ash sprays from her, uh, from her mouth. It was worth it, she swears. Her voice is suddenly firm, her eyes hard and bright. Then she sinks back into the scorched pillows and a twisting, frantic fever. The walls of the captain's cabins are lined with... Okay, that's... Yeah, I'm gonna take my leave. I didn't promise anything. I didn't mean not to promise, but yeah, you leave the captain with the scorched stink of air behind and return to the bridge. New Winchester is further than you'd like, and the captain hasn't long left. Uh, okay, you can see here that we have people. Ooh! You see the heat down below? Okay, now that I know I can dodge, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna be okay. What I want to do, and also that guy Yeah, let's go. Oh, that's not great. Don't fire too close to them. Okay, that worked. Whew. Yeah, don't fire too close to them because it, 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 it damages you. You approach the buckled wreckage poised to plunder the plunderers. Behind you, someone is humming a song of victory. So you can strip it for repairs. Uh, I didn't do this when I was just playing around and making sure I knew how to control things. So I don't know what happens when I do this. I'm going to uh, raid the remains and see what happens. Ill got gains. Your boarding party returns with wallets and watches, cufflinks. Oh, maybe that's gonna be good for the terror. Uh, lockets and keepsakes. You store them in the safe to be pawed when and if you make it back to port. For 41 souvenirs. That is lovely. Where can I see that? How do I. How do I. Wait, how, mm, oh, it's right there. Oh, that's souvenirs. Right. Because currency is a. Uh, like, I think it was mem- There's multiple currencies, or there should be multiple currencies if this is anything like Sunless Skies. Sunless Sea, sorry. Um, 
but uh, currencies are stuff like memories and tales of amazingness and weird metaphysical things like that, which is lovely. I say metaphysical, that's not really the the word. I just said it because we read it before. Wispy condensation trails across the sky. The ghost of passing trains. I'm not sure it's really just the condensation. Well, I guess this is condensation, isn't it? That's well, water vapor. And here we are in New in Winchester. A new port captain, your crew crowd to the window. Let's talk. Load only, it says right there. It's pretty cool. You coast into the bustle, the din, the suit, and the steam of Wolvesy Station. It's clogged with other engines, scrappy mining locomotives from Lustrum Way, weather explorers gleaming with frost, sleek company vessels with bright brass fittings. No sooner have you pulled into the sidings than a brusque station master bustles over. He requests to come aboard. I must speak with your captain, he insists, brandishing a ledger. The usual formalities. Uh, yeah, he has just appeared at your shoulder. His face is solemn. His hat is in his hands. He lowers his eyes. I assume... Wait, who is this he? That's him, right? That's the station master. I suppose so. The, uh... No, no, that's the doctor. Sorry, I need to... I'm still trying... Yeah, I need to read this one. Maybe both, but primarily this one. I'm gonna look to the Orphean's doctor. The crew exchange bleak, wordless looks. The Orphan itself feels suddenly more empty. The station master looks confused. You inform him that, unfortunately, Captain Whitlock has just passed. Ah, he says neutrally. Sorry to hear that. Very sad, very sad. He waits for what he considers an appropriate minute and a half before continuing. Alas, even amidst tragedy, the cogs of bureaucracy must turn. If Captain Whitlock is deceased, the station authority require their answers from, their, from f the first officer. He dons a set of spectacles and locates his pen. It will be relatively painless. Name, background, purpose of visit, etc. Shall we begin? Yes, we shall. And here is where we create our captain. And get ready for character creation, because I don't know anything about this. So, let's find out. Today, London lies between the stars. Her new empire unfolds across the heavens. But ten years ago, before the northern gate was opened, before the renewed empress led her people into the skies, it lay in a vast cavern far beneath the earth. Deep, dark, marvelous. Who were you then? So this might be a sequel to Fallen London or to Sunless Skies, Sunless Sea, sorry. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, a sequel more in the sense, not so much of the plot, perhaps, but more in the sense of the setting that it has It's further on, at least as far as I can tell. So it could be a street urchin, a soldier, a poet, an academic, and I can uh, click on that arrow over there to see more. A priest, a sailor, because of course that's the Z's, uh, or it used to be. Wait a minute, is that specifically from the seas? You rove the mournful, merciless waters of the Untersey. That is indeed from the sea. Yeah, right. You will begin with a high iron, the skill of confronting and overcoming. I kind of want to be shifty. I kind of want to be, like, smart and spoken. Uh, and spoken? You know what I mean, like, silver-tongued. A ministry auditor and a revolutionary. Okay. So, let's see what we gain over here. You can read the descriptions if you want. I'm just going to focus on the skills. This is for Veils, the skill of evading and deceiving. This is for I High Iron, the skill of confronting and overcoming. High. Uh, so these are all high, but I thought there was one with very high. Was this the one? No, they all have high hiccups. Sorry. <laughs> you will begin with High Heart, the skill of convincing and enduring. I like that. I like that. Uh, you'll begin with High Mirrors, the skill of investigating and deducing. I also like that. What do I like the most? Well, I, I'm more comfortable playing an academic, so I, I don't want to go with that, basically. That's, you know, for a let's play. Uh, then we have High Hearts, the skill of convincing and enduring for the priest, and then the High Mirrors over here for the minister, Ministry Auditor, and High Veals for the skill of evading and deceiving for the revolutionary. So, it's a choice. <clears throat> Excuse me. If I want to go with uh, investigating and deducing, I either go with a Ministry Auditor. For a time, you served at the Ministry of Public Decency, which has become Her Majesty's preferred instrument. Okay. Uh, and a student of sciences and arts of philosophy. Uh, that sounds good to me. Let's go with that. Uh, wait a minute. No, no, no. I wanted a poet. This is where I'm comfortable with. I don't want to go with that. I want to go with, yeah, the skill of convincing and enduring. Let's go with that. Uh, sorry, I'm, I got mistaken because I my, my my heart goes to where it wants. Uh, a convincing and enduring. So it's either a priest, hymns and hymnals, Sundays and sermons, 
and a poet. Both of them get my get me in trouble in different ways, but this is trouble that I'm more interested in. The pen, the ink, the blank, monstrous page. I love it. I love it. Let's just go with that. Uh, poetry was popular in old London. We can go back as well. You were a poet. Some poets sought fame, others art. Some simply enjoyed bohemian company. Three preeminent artist movements have come to prominence, and I would like the latter, please. Let's see. Maybe not. The Celestials, the Nocturnals, and the Sovereign School, um, which probably is also part of the revolutionaries. Im uh, increase your mirrors, uh, the skill of investigating and inducing, and abilities uh, and affiliates you with Bohemia. Uh, so all of these affiliate me with Bohemia. This increases Vale, and this increases the Iron. So I kind of want to go with the Celestials here. In old London, they wrote nostalgically of the surface and the sun. Now they write of the stars and the treasures of heaven. That's so lovely. So lovely. Uh, what does winning mean to you? Lovely. Because, of course, being sort of a roguelike... Sorry, it's roguelite, but still, uh, has you know, c conditions for winning is also a thing. You want uh, wealth, fame, or the truth? which looks like a bleeding sun, or something to that extent. Even the stars have secrets, but they won't keep them from you. Uh, be warned, this is a demanding Im ambition. Dang, dang it. Best played by a lineage that has already completed wealth or fame. Well, sounds like the game is telling me, go away, Colonel. You are terrible at this. Gather stories of your exploits and write about them in New Winchester. And also to win, gather a substantial retirement fund, acquire lodgings at a hub port, and retire. Well, that would be if this was lineage, lineage. Played by a lineage. That's really interesting. This game. I, I, I really wanted to play Sunless Seas. I just never got the time. Uh, but I was, and then I saw that this game was coming out, and yeah. You will immortalize your exploits in the suns of the sky. For centuries, people have launched themselves into the unknown in the hope of making a name for themselves. You're sure you'll succeed? Well, I'm pu putting this on YouTube, so I definitely will succeed. After all, you never heard of anyone who didn't. And uh, this is our appearance. I love it. Ah, that's so cool. Okay, so we how many hairs do we have? Okay, we have no hairs, uh, and we have, we have 13 extra hairs. So, I like... I like that one. That one is cool. But let's see. Do we have any more? Okay, this one is cool as well, but it depends. Let's see. The hat. What do we have? Uh, so how many hats do we have? We have none, and we have nine hats. Oh my god, that hat. That is the size of tremendous things. Okay, th this hat... Mm, this hat is interesting. Uh, this hat is kind of cool. Mm, I'm not... Ooh, I like that. I don't know what it is, but it's a thing. Brow. Oh, I do say. Ooh. Okay, it's literally the brow, but you can get glasses or monocles anyway uh, at the same time. Oh, I like that stern and things. And then we, ha I could see, I could show them all to you, but let's just do that so you guys can can appreciate. I like this nose. Let's go with that. And the chin. Hmm. Hmm. Nah, that doesn't go quite as well with. It. I like this one. This chin 17 is interesting. And the outfit, we can change the outfit as well. I'm not... Ooh, that's... That covers my everything. Yeah, right, okay. That's a lot of outfits right there. I like that a lot. Let's go with that. Uh, and then I wanted to change the hair. That's right. Because... Uh, that's kind of cool. But I, I, I will go with the um, with this hair. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Uh, term of address. This will determine what people call you, of course. And then we have citizen, captain, sir, milady, and all those things, and professors. Wait a minute, I'm a poet. I need to remember that. Uh, administrator, secretary, nurse, comrade, brother, sister, reverend, so many things. Okay, so I kind of want... Madam is an interesting one. Um, that's an interesting one. Let's see. Intent, intendant. Ugh. Don't I have anything, like, more... Doctor is cool. Doctor is cool. And I like that. Oh, no. Uh, sure. Murphy. Sister Murphy. Dr. Murphy. What are you talking about? Dr. Murphy, please. Thank you very much. And uh, this is my character. It comes with uh, the some things. Iron, not very good at it. Uh, and uh, that subterfuge, also not very good. I thought we were going to be able to get three and sort of be like a jack of all trades. There's no jack of all trades in roguelikes. It's lights. Sorry. There's a distinction between roguelikes and roguelites, which... Yeah, anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's start a new game. Jack of all trades are 
they, they, yeah. Three weeks have passed. This morning, Captain Whitlock received a simple memorial service. Her body was consigned to a necropolis train bound for the Serene Mausoleum. Now you sit with a handful of her relatives in the threadbare offices of her solicitors. A methodical notary is reading the will. The captain was wealthy once, but squandered her capital on mysterious expenses before her expedition to the Blue Kingdom. Uh, let's see, your hull is a little worse for wear. Try to repair it soon. You can do this for a small fee at the New Winchester and, uh, or at New Winchester, and certain other ports, or sometimes by salvaging from the wrecks of your opponents. Indeed. Thank you very much. And this is just our thing. I can't click over here. This is just the thing. And uh, I'm going to listen to the end. In a final codicil, the notary announces, Captain Whitlock confirmed that possessions of the Orphean was... The possession of the Orphean was to pass to its first officer. He peers at you with dry gray eyes. This includes a certain black box contained in the Orphean's hold. Captain Whitlock's final request was that at uh, a time of your choosing, you transport this box to an address in London. He hands you an address card and deposit it there. You are not to look inside. She gave no explanation. And that's it. You're a captain now. The orphan is your yours. You can investigate the black box at New Winchester. You could take the box to London as requested, or you could sell it and be done, which I don't want to do. I kind of want to open it and unleash the terror of the world upon everyone and just have to restart. It's the first episode, after all. Uh, you have been uh, bequeathed a large black box, which once belonged to Captain Whitlock, and I have also gotten a hundred sovereigns. New total of 101... Oh, wait a minute, that's not... Did I say souvenirs? I said souvenirs. Forget what I said about the currencies. Unfortunately, we... It's not as whimsical as it used to be. I don't know if it's actual currency, it, what the currencies were or, of Sunless Seas. But as I read souvenirs. I'm sorry. It's, yeah, I'm going to misread things. The clamoring central station of New Winchester, a place of steam and smut and thundering iron. Here you can find people willing to pay for a skilled captain's service. And we will. We will do a lot of things. But not right now because we're out of time for the day so for right now i'm colonel rpg and this has been sunless skies i really hope you've enjoyed it and if you did go ahead and leave a comment like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later or if it's come out already you can just click over here uh but above all thank you so much for watching and i hope i'll see you next episode Bye bye